All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Pouts here. Um, you know, I'm going to actually change this date because I don't know that it's this date for you. But this is actually section uh, 4-6. And section 4-6 is focusing on the goal below. So what I'd like you to do is to write down that goal in your goal sheet. And the goal is I can prove triangles congruent using the hypotenuse leg theorem. So a new theorem today. And chances are you don't know, I'm guessing if you were to rate yourself right now on your knowledge of this, it would be pretty low because you just don't know the hypotenuse leg theorem. And that's totally fine. Um, hopefully after today you will, and then we'll do some practice with it. So as you're writing that down, uh, the picture of the day there, I don't know if you've ever seen the skit, the more cowbell skit, but it's, it's pretty funny. It was from Saturday Night Live uh, ways back, back in uh, Will Ferrell's early years. Um, but it's all about cowbell, and this guy said, I've got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. And I actually played, did that skit in high school, so it was pretty awesome. You should look it up. It's called the more cowbell skit. All right, anyway, um, here. All right, so here's what we're going to start with. In your notes, there's uh, two diagrams here. It says in the diagram below, two sides and a not included side or angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and a non-included angle of another triangle. So you can see here, we have 4 is congruent to 4, 5 is congruent to 5, and we have this 45 degree angle. Now if you were to write that, that would be the ASS congruence or SSA, which we're not allowed to do. And this is a prime example of, just a, a, a counter example of why that wouldn't always work. So it says, do the triangles appear to be congruent? I would say no. But we can conclude that the side side angle is not valid. Well, it says we cannot conclude that the side side angle is not valid for proving two triangles congruent. However, this method works in special cases of right triangles where the right angles are the non included angle. And that's going to be our, our thing for today. So if you're looking at, um, just so you know, the right angle always points to the hypotenuse. So if we're looking at a diagram of a right angle, for those of you who haven't seen a right angle in a while, or sorry, a right triangle, the hypotenuse is the longest side, and that would be the one that's opposite of the right angle. And then the other two sides are called legs. All right, so when we're dealing with this theorem today, we're going to be dealing with right triangles. So the theorem here, it's the hypotenuse leg theorem. This is one you're going to need to know because this is essentially the side-side angle theorem, but it only works for right, uh, certain right triangles. So it says the hypotenuse and the leg of, if the hypotenuse and the leg of one triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and the leg of another triangle, another right triangle, then the, uh, the triangles are congruent. So if we have the hypotenuse and the leg of one right triangle, that's key. If they're congruent to the hypotenuse and the leg of another right triangle, then we can prove that those two triangles are congruent. So our picture there shows it. We have the hypotenuse right here. We have one leg congruent, and we have the right angle, which is the non included angle, but it's the right angle. Then the two triangles are going to be congruent every time. All right? But there are a couple of conditions you have to follow to meet to use this theorem. Um, and they kind of come from that theorem. The first one is that you have to have two right triangles. If they're not right triangles, this will not work. Uh, the second condition is that you have to have congruent hypotenuses. It has to be, the hypotenuse has to be one of the congruent sides. Hypotenuses. I don't know. If, I don't know if there's a word hypotenai, but we're going to go with hypotenuses for right now. And the other condition that you have to have for this to work is that one pair of congruent legs. So one of the congruent legs has to be congruent to one of the congruent legs on the other triangle, the corresponding ones. If you meet those three conditions, um, then this theorem will work. So let's look at a couple examples then. 
It says, determine if the two triangles are congruent by the hypotenuse leg theorem. If so, write the triangle congruence statement. So, let's look at number one. We have two right triangles. Perfect. And our hypotenuses are congruent because they're the same side. That's by the reflexive property of congruence. That's when we use the reflexive if they are the same side, just sharing a side. Unfortunately, we don't have anything else. So, we're going to say for this one, not enough info. Actually, you know what? Um, this is a parallel. Technically, I think uh, we don't have enough about the sides. We have enough about the, uh, more angles, but we're going to say not enough info for this one. Because no legs congruent. All right. Number two, though, we have right triangles again. That's a good thing. We have the hypotenuses are congruent, and the third one is one pair of congruent sides or legs. Well, we have right here the the reflexive. We have one pair of congruent legs. So yes. Then we have now the congruent statement. You have to have in the correct order. So if we're gonna say congruent or triangle L, M, N, that would be then congruent to what's the corresponding one to L would be O, so triangle O, M, N. The, the order matters, remember when we're talking about congruence. All right, third one, um, all right, a little bit different. It says, for what value of X and Y are the triangles congruent by HL or the hypotenuse leg? So remember, for hypotenuse leg, we have to have a right angle. That's good, we have that. We have to have the hypotenuse is congruent, we'd have to have the pair of legs congruent. So for what values of x and y are the triangles congruent? This is going to take a little work. We have x equals 2y, and we have x minus 4 equals y plus 3. Now this is a system of linear equations. We have two variables in there, we have to, and we, we don't have enough information to solve just from one equation, so we have to use the two. So what I'm going to do is, since I have, I'm going to use the substitution method. Since I have this part right here, x equals 2y, I'm going to plug 2y in for x. So then I have 2y, instead of x, we have 2y minus 4 equals y plus 3. Um, I can subtract y from both sides. And at the same time, I could add 4 to both sides. So I have just 1y equals uh, 7. So there we got y equals 7. Now I can plug that back in for here and get x equals 2 times 7. So x equals 14. And I think that should work. If you plug them back in, you could check um, for the hypotenuses, that works, 14 and 14. For the legs, that would be um, 10 and 10. So that would be it. So a good review of system of linear equations. Now let's see where we're at with time. All right, we'll do one proof here together. Let's we'll see, I haven't done this one yet, but let's look at this interesting uh, picture here. Now it says to do a paragraph proof. So we're gonna, I'm going to try and do it in a paragraph proof without even making a two-column proof. And you can follow along. It says we're given that angle W, V, X, uh, Z, and V, W, X are right angles. So those are labeled there. We have the two right angles. And we have that segment W, Z is congruent to segment V, X. W, Z is congruent to B, X. And that's these, I'm going to draw the two triangles that we're working with. W, V, Z. So W, V, Z. This is our going to be our green triangle. And the other triangle we're going to try to prove it congruent to is this one right here. So they are crossing. So the two sides that intersect, I will try to draw it like here. Those are congruent. That's what we have right there. That's part of our given. And we have that they're right angles. So we have the hypotenuse congruent, and we have the right angles. We just have to find one leg that's congruent. But we're going to start writing this as a proof. So 
I'm going to start at being, we are given that angle WVZ and angle VWX are right angles. And I'm going to also point there that that's making two right triangles. Because part of that theorem says we have to have two right triangles. So because of that, we have two right triangles. Um, and that segment WZ is congruent to segment VX. That's what we're given. And that's a lot of information because that's two of the three parts we need to use the hypotenuse leg theorem. Then we'll say by the reflexive, because if you look at this picture, this segment is congruent to itself because those are overlapping parts, of, so they'll be the same legs of the same triangle. By the reflexive property of congruence, again, this reflexive property is coming in all the time. Um, segment VW is congruent to segment VW, um, which is enough information. So we can say, therefore, triangle WVZ is congruent to triangle VWX by the hypotenuse leg theorem. Awesome. Spotted these. Did it in a paragraph proof. So this one was great because we just had we already had two of the three pieces to use the hypotenuse leg theorem. And we just needed to find that, that one leg that would be congruent. And since the reflexive property had that, um, then we have enough information to say that the two triangles are congruent. So now I just wanted to point out that we have, we have learned that for any triangles, we can use side, side, side postulate. We can use side, angle, side postulate. We can use um, angle, side, angle postulate. We can use, um, so these are all postulates. We can use the angle, angle, side theorem. We can use the hypotenuse leg theorem. And actually, that first one that we did, um, all corresponding parts congruent. That's just a definition. The definition of congruence. So if all we, that's the first way we learn. But now we have all these. This is six different ways to prove triangles are congruent. Now again, we have some other theorems that help us get there, like the third angle theorem. That helps us maybe get so that we have enough information to prove one of these, but these are the six ways that we have now to prove triangles are congruent. And again, that hypotenuse leg theorem only works for right triangles. So I'm just going to leave you with the, um, um, well, you can try to answer these two questions on your own. If you have a question on those, next time we'll talk about them. Um, but that's what I'm going to leave you with. So a thought question about, uh, um, so explain your reasoning and then an error, uh, find the error, an error analysis question. So that's section 4.6. Uh, why don't you, if you have a chance, you can go back and self-assess yourself, or you can wait till after we do the practice in class. But again, the goal is to prove triangles congruent using the hypotenuse leg theorem. We did some examples. We did a proof. Um, so there we go. We'll see you next time.